I'm Dave Collins with cleverhiker.com and in this episode we're going to take a look at insect protection and poisonous plants. Most of the time, insects in the wilderness are an annoyance rather than a danger. They'll buzz around your ears, cause itchy red bumps, and may even bite through your clothing. But insects like mosquitoes and ticks can also be carriers of diseases and viruses, so it's best to avoid them and protect yourself whenever possible. Fortunately, there are a few common avoidance strategies and chemical treatments that will help greatly reduce insect problems and will often lead to bite-free trips. One of the best ways to avoid bug annoyances is to avoid bugs altogether. Fall, winter, and early spring are generally cooler times of year when fewer bugs will be active. You can also limit bug exposure by wearing long sleeve clothing with a tight enough weave so that insects like mosquitoes won't be able to bite through it. Consider bringing lightweight mesh bug clothing if you're easily annoyed by insects but you prefer not to wear repellent. This is a cheap, light, and effective method. Avoid all perfumes and scents when you backpack. Even fragrant fabric softeners and dryer sheets can attract insects. Keeping yourself clean will help too. Mosquitoes and other insects are drawn to the ammonia in your sweat and your odor. To steer clear of mosquitoes, avoid hiking at dawn and dusk when they'll be the most active. And also avoid camping near standing water, which they need to reproduce. Try to camp in an area with a stiff breeze to limit your bug exposure, and having a small smoky fire can help as well. To avoid ticks, keep away from brushy areas and tall grass. Check your body for ticks when you stop for breaks. If you find a tick on your body, use a pair of tweezers to grasp it as close as you can to the skin and pull away evenly. Don't twist or yank. After removal, wash the area thoroughly. If you develop a rash or fever, see your doctor. You should also know how allergic you are to bee stings. If you're allergic, you should bring an EpiPen and know how to use it. If you get stung by a bee, pull out the stinger as quickly as you can with your fingers. Use a cold compress to ease the pain and take an antihistamine or painkiller as necessary. Along with avoiding insects, you can also use a couple of chemical treatments to greatly increase your bug protection, almost to 100% effectiveness. DEET and permethrin are generally considered the two most effective chemical treatments in bug protection. DEET is a repellent that goes on your skin, and permethrin is a treatment that goes on your clothing. Both are effective against a wide range of insects. DEET is a strong chemical repellent that should only be used on exposed skin. Products with higher concentrations of DEET will last longer than products with lower concentrations, but they'll both have the same effectiveness. But recent studies have shown that using a formula with 30 to 35% DEET is about as effective as it gets. DEET is effective against mosquitoes, noceums, ticks, biting flies, spiders, bees, and other insects. DEET is a reliable repellent, but it's also a pretty harsh chemical, so many people try and use it as little as possible. DEET can be damaging to plastic, leather, and synthetic fabrics, so be careful not to get it on your stuff. Keep DEET away from your mouth, eyes, ears, and nose, and don't spray it on any open wounds or rashes. Be careful not to inhale it or spray it directly on your face, and wash your hands thoroughly before eating food. It's also a good idea to avoid multi-use products like a DEET sunscreen mix. Instead, apply your sunscreen, let it absorb, and then add DEET as necessary. Permethrin is a treatment that should be used on your hiking clothing, and some clothing even comes pre-treated. It quickly forms a strong bond with your clothing when it dries, and it isn't easily absorbed by your skin or water. A permethrin spray treatment can last up to six weeks, and will even last through multiple washes. Permethrin repels and kills mites, ticks, chiggers, and mosquitoes. A combination of DEET and permethrin is about as close as you can get to total insect protection. Studies have shown that combination to be nearly 100% effective over eight hours 
in areas heavily populated by mosquitoes. Poisonous plants are another common annoyance that can easily be avoided if you know how to spot them in the backcountry. Make sure that you know the poisonous plants living in the area that you plan to visit. Make sure you can identify them before your trip. In North America, poison oak, ivy, and sumac are the poisonous plants that you really need to look out for. It's generally a good idea not to touch plants that you can't identify, especially in the winter when they won't have leaves so that you can easily identify them, but they can still cause a reaction. About 75% of North Americans are allergic to poison ivy, oak, and sumac. The severity of the reaction can vary, including weeks of itchy redness, bumps, and blisters. To avoid having to deal with a painful, itchy reaction, know how to identify these three plants and don't touch them. Poison ivy and oak can easily be spotted because of their leaf formations. They always grow their leaves in groups of three. Regardless of if the plant is a shrub or a vine, poison ivy and oak will have two leaves attached to a stalk opposite each other and one leaf jutting out on a short stem. That's where the saying, leaves of three, let it be, comes from. The leaves of poison oak and ivy are generally dark green and oily looking, but they can change to orange and red in the autumn. Poison sumac is much less common and is usually found in swampy areas in the form of a small tree or shrub. Its leaves grow in pairs of six to 12 with one single leaf at the end of the stem. The leaves are oval or oblong shape and they form a fine tip at the end. In the summer, they're bright green, and in the fall, they're bright red. Be careful not to burn any poisonous plants. The smoke can irritate your skin or enter your lungs to cause very severe reactions. If you think you might have made contact with a poisonous plant, wash your skin as quickly as possible. If you can get to it quickly, you might be able to avoid a painful reaction. If you've been in contact with a poisonous plant, the oil can remain on your clothing or your footwear for long after you've touched it. So make sure to wash your clothing or footwear if you've caught a case of poison ivy, oak, or sumac. Most plants in the wilderness are completely harmless, but it's a good idea to be able to identify the ones that could cause you a few weeks of dealing with a painful reaction. Remember, with insects and poisonous plants, a little knowledge and preparation will go a long way. Bite and itch-free trips will be your new standard. I'm Dave Collins with CleverHiker.com. Hike light, hike smart, and have fun.